Grade 12 learners across the country were given a questionnaire regarding which social media they preferred. And the results are recorded uh, in the table on the left here. Okay, so let's look at the questions. A. Explain the data collecting instrument used. We are told that a questionnaire was used. All right, so we need to explain what a questionnaire is. A questionnaire is basically questions uh, written on paper. where a person is giving options. So in this case, people had options to choose from. They had uh, the different apps to choose from. They could choose which one is their favorite. So that's what a questionnaire is. Remember, an interview uh, or a survey can also be used as a data collecting instrument. So write down the total number of learners interviewed in the survey. This one's important. All right, so it looks like the total number of learners interviewed should be 2,840. But remember, all numbers in this column are given in thousands. So actually, this number is 2,840,000 once you add the three zeros there. Okay, so let's write it out. Okay, two million eight hundred and forty thousand. Identify the column that shows discrete data. Remember, discrete are whole numbers without commas, and obviously, this column, the number of learners, are discrete because these are whole numbers. So that's the column that shows discrete data. D. Identify the column that shows continuous data now. Now, the last column, the percentages of learners, you can see these percentages have a comma and a decimal. So then, therefore, they are continuous. The easiest way to remember this is to say, once a number has a comma and continues after that comma, it becomes continuous because the number continues after the comma. So the last column, percentages of learners. Is the given data categorical or numerical? Uh, numerical means uh, given as numbers. The word numerical come, means number. So, and as we can see on the left here, this table has numbers. So, this data is numerical. It has numbers. On the next page, we're going to look at an example of categorical data now. All right, so let's go there. All right, so categorical data is the data where there are groups, and then you have to choose the category or the group that you fit into. So here are some examples. If someone were to ask you what is your uh, math code for, uh, let's say, your June exam, uh, then maybe you got a code 6, so then that's the category that you fall into. Uh, someone were to ask you what's your race, and then you have to choose, and you fall maybe in that category, that's your category. Or they would ask you, what's your gender? You will fall into a category. What's your eye color? There are six different eye colors, and you will fall into one of those categories. Uh, how are you feeling today? There's the happiness scale. Uh, and let's say you're not feeling very happy. Uh, you can choose a category that you fall into. So basically, with categorical data, there will always be a category that you must choose that you fall into. But the numerical data is the data that's represented as numbers. Okay, let's move on to uh, the last part of this example. Uh, all right, so write down the number of learners who use Facebook. Um, if there are three quarters of the number of learners who use Twitter. So Facebook learners... Uh, 
are three quarters, and remember three quarters we can write is three out of four. Three quarters of, of means times, uh, the number of learners who use Twitter. So of the number of learners who use Twitter, and how many learners use Twitter on the table, we can see that it's 400. So three quarters of 400. So let's work this out. So we've got 300. All right, but then again, don't forget, all the values in this column were given in thousands, so it's actually 300,000 learners who used uh, Facebook. So Facebook, 300,000. Write down in, uh, the simplified ratio of users in the other category to Twitter. So, so we want other to Twitter. So other is 900. Two, we can represent with a colon. Uh, Twitter is 400. We can simplify. We divide both sides by 100. Um, then the simplified ratio is 9 is to 4. And it's correct like this. Don't swap it around, otherwise it will be wrong. I think learners always feel that the smaller ratio should be uh, on the left. Not necessarily. So it's okay like this. All right. So in the next example... Uh, we are given the ratios now. So let's uh, read the question. The ratio of WhatsApp to Twitter users is 15 is to 16. Find the number of WhatsApp users then. Okay, so if the ratio is given and you have to use it, then you'll have to use the crisscross method. So, so if you use the crisscross method, we can draw a table. This side is, so it's WhatsApp first to Twitter. So this side is WhatsApp, and then this side is Twitter. So WhatsApp is represented by 15, and Twitter is represented by 16. So we're going to use these ratios uh, that are given to find the WhatsApp users. Of course, we know that Twitter users, Twitter users 400, we, can, we have it on the table there. So it's 400 for Twitter. So now we're going to do the crisscross method to actually work out the WhatsApp users. So it will be 400 times 15 divided by 16. So 400 times 15 divided by 16. Okay, so let's work that out. It's 375. Right, it's 375 learners who used uh, WhatsApp. So this gives us 375 users for WhatsApp. And again, we remember that the number of learners are represented in thousands. So it will be 375,000 learners. Find the missing values of TikTok. So once we have all the other values, we can take the total here and minus everything else. We can add everything else first. So if we add the values that we do have on the table there, we have 300 plus 375 plus 400. Okay, that gives us 2,200. So what we can do now is we can take the total everything 2,840 and we can minus the 2,200 of everything else. So we can find this one, the TikTok. So take the total minus everything else and this will give us 640. But of course, uh, all these values are given in thousands. So don't forget to add the three zeros. Thank you.